the legendary Kachimo Pool Pond. Woo! Oh, looks like someone's a little active. Clowns and Paku. All caught. All trained down to the big peacock. Even tigress herself was caught. Giants among the land. Connected to this pond. The original pond. Zach Ketchum Pond. Ah, yes. Just a beautiful thing. Yes, the goldfish and mosquito fish are trained. Beautiful. Beautiful. Don't forget the creek. Yes, the creek flows back into the lake. I'd like to have a couple little guys here and there. Flagged it off. There is a tunnel right there that goes underground. Iguana, ignore that. And this is the creek that flows like a river of life into the rest of my lake. There, my friends, is the life giver itself. The pump, strong. Almost 4,000 gallons per uh, gallons per hour, I believe that is. To push this water all the way up underground to this UV filter. Now, this does not filter small fragments. That pump is a a uh, uh, debris handling pump so that pump is going to pump through th uh, debris that's up to a quarter inch in diameter I believe so nothing really can break that rock that that, that pump that's a uh, by tetra pond I believe that's 3,900 gallons per hour correct me if I'm wrong but it's a very very powerful pump as you can see that is the water fresh from the lake Clear, crystal clear. Let's go take a look at it over there. I'll get back to this guy soon. All right, crystal clear pump from the lake, right? Everyone's happy. Starting to kick up a little bit of that healthy algae. Want to keep a little bit of algae in your pond, you know? Can't get everything ruined. That's why I try not to clean it, let the sucker fish do their job and the UV pump do the rest. <clears throat> crystal clear water. At the end of the day, your fish will be very healthy and very happy. Okay, so back to the pump. Heavy pump, pump it through the lake. If you don't have a lake behind your house, you could still do this. You just have to have the pump recirculating the water. And you have to have a filter that's going to take out all the debris and stuff like that and the fish waste. This way, with the, the lake pumping in into your pond, you have the water coming in, fresh water, and the water change helps for the exotics to grow faster. These red tails, this one was just 30, uh, 13 inches not too long ago, about a couple months ago. And now look, they're all hand trained. Come here, come here. Look how good, oh hey, come on. I'm trying to do a show over here. Hey, little guy. Oh yeah. They're all really fat. I just fed them not too long ago, so they don't really want to kiss me. Oh, here we go, come on, come on. Yeah, there you go big guy and tigress ooh, my absolute favorite okay so the pumps you need a strong pump it's your preference no matter how big the pond is you're gonna need one that's gonna filter that water around get it nice and fluid and nice and aerated that's all you really need is a couple pumps to keep that water flowing and aerated see there's what there's aeration see all those bubbles 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 are good Bubbles are good. That means your pond's healthy and aerated. This water's really hot because that's why that's why I actually connected it to the lake. I needed a large body of water in the in the cool temperatures. <clears throat> Even down here in South Florida, the Pembroke Pines area, it gets a little too cold for a small pond like this in uh, in the winter time. If the temperature drops below 60, your fish are doomed. Even though you can take them inside, I have a couple of precautions over here and there in case something happens. But at the end of the day, you want to make sure your fish are safe. I like to plug one pump in uh, to one outlet and a second this uh, secondary pump into another outlet. So the pump that's actually pump pumping new water into the lake is in one outlet. And uh, the second pump that's pumping 
the oxygen around is in the second outlet. So that way your fish still have oxygen in case something happens to you, get into a car accident, you can make it back and none of your fish will be dead. Uh, sadly, Shamu, I had my fish being watched for a couple days. Uh, some people came over, I'm having an addition to my house and uh, they decided to put both pumps in one outlet. That outlet uh, shot because of the the electricity being used and uh and yeah shamu so sacrificed rest in peace shamu rest in peace but these guys are still happy thanks to shamu as you can see i got those two suckers these guys will clean up your pond like you have you will never believe you need them you need them understand you need these placos <laughs> everyone else is happy because of these placos Everything on the side, you see the side, how clean they are, and the patches. It's okay to have patches here and there. Most of the fish hang out over here, and the sucker fish don't go over there. That's why that large patch of algae is on that wall. But anyway, <clears throat> you need those placos to keep your pond crisp and clean for those awesome videos. All right, so this right here, this is where the water escapes. I have a a little filter that comes with the pool most of this stuff comes with the pool guys so you won't have to spend too much money but keep in mind with above ground pools you do have to put a fence over if it's a certain height this is only 30 inches i don't think you have to put a fence around this but i did add this little make uh makeshift fencing to make the pond look a little bit prettier from the outside and at the end of the day it is technically a fence so I have this is again this is just the aeration pump this is not connected this is not losing water anyway it's just recirculating keeping the fish happy and uh, energized this is where the water is escaping to <clears throat> there's a system of tubes that go into this pond down here okay you can also I have a waterfall right there I can put another pump over there and make a second waterfall if I'd like I could always put a uh, connect uh, a little like a, a, this tube right here I could I could seal that one up make a waterfall you can do whatever you'd like I personally like it like this it's really simple for me easy to manage some monsters down there. I should probably get that for you later but maybe that's another video so now you can kind of see the the whole layout from here it's a better angle of everything that's going on okay you got the pump aeration pump right we have the pump that's coming from the lake we have this is a secondary uh, water escape so if this one gets clogged with uh, too many leaves something like that this will come into effect and that also has a pump running into the secondary pond and that goes down into the creek always want to leave some room for any lawn guys or if they're having construction they don't want to have to come knock on your door to get over the little creek that you created so that's why I leave that room that's uh, beyond the flagged creek for for machinery and guys to go by so yeah pretty much now this is a 10 foot pool uh, I'm not sure the brand but it, any pool is fine just want to make sure that you have one that that's uh, sturdy and metal metal framed so now you guys know how to build your own pond I've seen a couple of you guys do some awesome stuff about it, and I want to see some more out of it. So, okay, for down here, if you just want a uh, quiet little, like, uh, scenic pond, you can sit by, put a little bench by, you know, make it pretty, have some trained goldfish or koi. You can do this as well. It's pretty easy. You dig in the ground. You got to make sure there's no pipes, though, no electric cords, stuff like that. And you're going to, um, I would use the floor plans or I would even call the city to see if this is okay. Or call your, um, your, uh, local neighborhood, uh, what's it called? Board, I guess. To see if this is okay to build before you do it. Just so you don't have any problems. I always use Firestone lining. Okay? Firestone lining is the best. If it's too big, say you want to get a couple, uh, say you have, have a huge pond you want to create and you can't find the liner online or uh, maybe you have a way to get a liner you want to use a PVC liner instead of the Firestone which is a lot stronger uh, you you can easily connect uh, two liners together with just a simple caulking okay just get a, a liquid caulking you'll be good to go <clears throat> make sure that's sealed and uh, you won't have any problems 
So that's what I did actually here. I took two 10 foot liners, made sure I had some extra material in case there was a, a leak or anything like that. And uh, that's how I built this pond right here as well. So guys, now you, you know what to do 100%. Look how happy these goldfish are. I'm gonna give you one more look at the whole setup. Down to the creek. Don't forget that pump. Has to be a really strong pump. Even if you're just recirculating the water, you want that 3,000 gallon plus. Keep your fish happy and healthy. The UV filter, it's very important from the lake. You will get parasites if you just, if you don't use a filter, you will get parasites, absolutely. So that's why I have the UV filter, not even so much for algae, just for the parasites. See, my fish are always happy, never have a parasite. Never have, never will. <clears throat> and now you know, tigress, sunrise, sunset, Caught those peas with Monster Mike. Shout out to Monster Mike. Anyway, <clears throat> and thank you, Joey, for helping me and everything. Uh, that's uh, Richard's uh, Oscar. He donated to me a long time ago. These these red tail catfish were actually an inch and a half long. You scroll down my page on Catch Em All Fishing, you'll see them when they were like psh, nothing. So that's amazing. Everybody knows I caught the the, the clown knife fish out of Captain Bill's Southwater Bass Charters. Man, some big fish down there. Some big fish out there too. You know if FWC let me, I'll throw some snook and tarpon in this, but sorry guys. So it's really hot outside, but I want to take that video for you guys now. Have a great day and catch them all, okay?